Back everyone to Open Line. We are talking movies. We have with us two film critics from the Music City Film Critics Association, and we, we're just going through movies. So I'm going to ask you both your favorite movies at the end. We've gone through a whole bunch of like award contender type movies, and next on the list is The Whale. And we'll show the poster. And Sean, what what do we need to know about the whale? Well, the whale uh, stars Brendan Fraser. Um, he's uh, a 600 pound person. Um, obviously in a fat suit of sorts, um, but uh, he's trying to reconnect with his daughter played by one of the Stranger Things kids. But uh, this one is getting a lot of buzz around the performance from Brendan Fraser, and right now I'd say probably he's the, mm. the leading um, contender for best actor. That's this awards big. season, okay. um, A24 just released its first preview of the film a few weeks ago. Um, they're going to start their awards campaign blitz here um, in a couple weeks. We're going to see the film next week here in town. It'll come out later in Dece I think around Christmas time in a limited release, and then they'll do a slow roll out through 2023. But it comes from Darren Aronofsky, who's uh, been kind of a uh, I won't say controversial, but he makes some interesting movies. Uh, just go look him up on IMDb. Uh, a lot of good ones though but um the whale it's definitely one of those um, dramas that's going to be one of the most talked about here uh in the next few weeks and he's a contender for best actor okay mm -hmm. top gun maverick Corey, what about that well um you've probably <laughs> seen it that's what i would say to everybody um it feels like everybody saw this movie it's probably the only film this year that really feels like everybody saw it everybody loved it um it was it was a surprise. I mean, the first Top Gun is not necessarily like a cinematic masterpiece by any stretch. It's a very popular movie, and the mood of it, I think, still translates. And Tom Cruise obviously was big for his career, but this film just like you know, it's it's taking this major actor and throwing him into a time where the movies that really made him are starting to grow. They're going away. They're becoming different and. This film uses a lot of, as much as you can with, you know, fighter jets and such, practical effects and, you know, this film really, you know, has crews who's, you know, with the Mission Impossible franchise continues to, like, push the abilities of what someone can really do with the stunts and such and it's just like a love letter to, like, the old fashion way of doing things and like the opening scene is like Tom Cruise trying to prove to folks that like you can still <laughs> do things the old fashioned right. way like you don't have to just like you know seed things to the computer and I think in this case you know he's like using a blockbuster to like say something to all the other blockbusters like hey you can still do it this way we can still make an old fashioned you know practical effects type thing like this is a Jerry Bruckheimer movie and that's like if you remember the you know movies like The Rock and the Pirates of the Caribbean films like those are like that's his wheelhouse is doing these big yeah. practical effects, you know, explosions and such. And I saw this movie with my son yeah. in a crowded theater, and it just, it was the first big movie yeah. after the after the pandemic. Oh, I, yeah. I feel like, and, and there were others, but this was the first time I personally had been mm -hmm. in a packed theater, and everyone loved it, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and it was just a great feeling. It made me feel like, okay, movies are back, and that yeah. was a good feeling. Oh, yeah. I went to uh, Savannah, Georgia the weekend after it came out, and they've actually got now the world's tallest IMAX screen. So being able to watch it on that and just, like, <laughs> having everything going around, I was like, I felt like I was in the cockpit. So, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it's one of the most enjoyable films that's come out in the last few years. Okay, Sean, uh, Elvis, next movie. That's, that's gotten a lot of attention, Elvis. I mean, the king of rock and roll finally got his due um, in a film, though we know Elvis Presley was not a good actor, <laughs> but if anyone's seen his movies, you know. But um, it, Elvis is a, um, I mean, it's a sensational music biography of uh, one of the greatest musicians of all time, arguably the best. I mean, record selling wise, I mean, I mean, undeniably. But um, Austin Butler lives, breathes Elvis. Uh, he does most of the music in this film. The mannerisms are of Elvis are nearly perfect in this. And if there's one person who is going to challenge Brendan Fraser this uh, award season. I think it's going to be Austin Butler. Wow. Um, okay. and never underestimate the Academy. The Academy is made up of 10,000 people in it who vote on this stuff. Um, and this could be the movie um, at the right time. Um, biographies can be hit or misses, but Elvis, I mean, the box office numbers showed. I think a lot of people were expecting this to be a disappointment of sorts, um, a colossal disaster, some might think, after the first preview came out. But when it came out, the reviews, the word of mouth, the box office, it surprised everyone. And um, it's just, it, it's, I guess, interesting to look back on it that this film, when they filmed it in Australia, 
when COVID was just first starting to hit. This was the film, if y'all remember, where everyone's like, okay, well, there's this thing called COVID out there. And then Tom Hanks gets COVID. Yeah, and everyone, Tom and, Hanks. And, and he's everyone, in this movie. Yeah, and this is where he got he got COVID on the oh, set of this. Oh, my goodness. Okay. When COVID was first ramping up and everyone's like, oh, Tom Hanks got it. Mm -hmm. And he's like... <laughs> He's got this like shield or whatever, like protect at all costs kind of thing. But um, yeah, that was bad. That was when COVID was like. Mm -hmm. oh. All right, I, we don't have a ton of time. I want each of you to say some of your favorite movies, maybe a minute and a half. Sean, what what are some of your favorite movies this year? Uh, some of my favorites, I think. Um, uh, one in particular that I think surprised me and everyone who saw it was an Indian swashbuckling blockbuster called RRR. Uh, this film, a uh, three-hour-plus epic, uh, it won't get nominated for Best Foreign Film because it wasn't the official country selection of India, but uh, this film does blockbuster better than most blockbuster films. It is, it, it's full of great performances, better CGI than what you see in a Marvel movie, um, and the, I think they're even talking about a sequel to it, but it just blew me away. This was one of those where when I saw it in the theater, I couldn't believe what I saw. Wow. Uh, I'd only heard from a handful of uh, colleagues of, the, of me and Corey's that saw it, said, you need to see this as soon as you can. I'm like, okay, how long is it? It's three hours. <laughs> three hours? I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, my other favorite movie is almost three hours, but uh, I was like, okay. So I went and saw it, and I, I could not believe it. And I just keep going back to RRR just of... Um, being captivated by it. Is it out now? Like, where would you see that movie? It is on Netflix. It's not in the um, the original language. I think it's in Hindi mm -hmm. um, on Netflix, but it is worth seeing on Netflix. Um, I think that my other favorite film is is um, The Batman. Came out back in March from Matt Reeves, director of the Planet of the Apes movies. Um, being a someone who grew up with Batman, Batman comics, Batman toys, watched the Batman the Animated Series. I think this Batman is the one most akin to my childhood and what I grew up um, loving. I think it's just a great uh, detective story uh, akin to Seven. Um, oh, yeah. And yeah. Nothing, and I love the Christopher Nolan Batman movies as much as anyone, but to me, something about this Batman really did hit everything I wanted it to be. And um, I think it shows Batman in the light of a hero that we haven't seen in other Batman films. But that was on HBO Max, and, mm -hmm. and yeah, that was out there. All right, one minute, your favorite movies. Well, I've talked about The Fablemans, um, a couple of my others, uh, Jordan Peele's Nope, um, which is just a stellar, old, kind of old-fashioned, you know, you know, monster movie, but with a very modern twist. Jordan Peele's, like, emerged to be one of the best filmmakers that's working right now. Won the Oscar for Get Out for be Best Original Screenplay. Had Us a few years ago, which has done really well. Um, Monkey Paul Productions, which is his, like, you know, studio kind of production company, is really making some cool stuff, and I loved that. It's on Peacock just now, so if you can watch that. Um, another film I love uh, two small ones. Um, one is called On the Count of Three, which is by Gerard Carmichael, who kind of got his start doing stand-up comedy, had the Carmichael show that was on NBC, and now he's kind of made his foray into going behind the camera. Um, it is a very bleak comedy. Um, if you'll look at the plot synopsis, your, mind, your eyes might go, whoa, that's what that movie's about, but <laughs> it's Stunning. It's one of the best, you know. They want me to rap. Is yeah. there, it, it, all right, so that one, is there one other one quickly? Uh, After Sun, which I think is still at the Bell oh, Court. Yeah, After um, Sun. Don't read a lot about it. You'll, you'll love it. Okay, nope. We, I had a call the other day from somebody saying mm -hmm. nope was great. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.